um, the next generation of compounds on the open source drug discovery from the Laria project. Um, as people hopefully know, there's been uh, a couple of rounds of synthesis and evaluation, and um, those have thrown up some compounds which are extremely potent as antibilarials, um, but which do suffer from very low solubility. And uh, one of the, uh, and yet the, the original compounds, and some of the compounds behave extremely well um, and, and, and are very potent. Um, the, the small number of compounds that were evaluated in mice uh, showed no efficacy. And one of the possible reasons for that is because they're very uh, uh, insoluble. And we would like, therefore, to, um, to make some more analogs of these compounds, um, evaluating different areas of the compounds uh, to see if we can uh, maintain or improve efficacy, um, potency, while improving the, the properties of the compounds, particularly um, their solubility. And we posted some possible compounds on the Synaptic Elite webpage, uh, which is linked on the discussion notes. Yeah, Chris, you want to uh, say something? Yeah, well, just just the aspect of, I, of the positive controls for the mouse experiments. Yeah, um, it's just worth uh -huh. bearing in mind whether whether they have any uh, this the solubility that it's it's not going into their chow or, or whatever it is, whether that's, that's worth a, a second look. And what they're... they're ve you mean that at the same time as evaluating the compounds, we didn't yes, have a compound exactly, yeah, that was evaluated? Yeah. And that, that, gives, a that also gives them a, a variance for that assay if it's a, a standard, standard positive control. Sure, that's a good point. Um, Paul, did you uh, want to comment on that? Um, when you were talking about that with Sergei about this, um, we didn't have a control compound included. Sorry, I, I was struggling with the sound. Could could you just repeat the question again, please? So the issue was the, the, uh, the mice and studies that, that we had, had the, the, the negatives from that from those assays, assays, but we didn't, didn't have, have a known positive, positive compound included as a control. I mean, in essence, we did because we run the study in large batches of compounds. So there were compounds that were active in that study. Uh, the mice, you know, in the same infection group, uh, uh, did uh, get a, a malaria infection, and that was cured by other compounds. So, uh, in effect, there, there were controls in there. We just didn't share those with you because that was sort of confidential data from other. Okay. Thanks. Uh, so uh, yeah, on, on the on the Synaptic Elite page that's listed there, um, 412, we've been doing a consultation online about um, various possible compounds to make next. The idea was that we would come up with a list of the top 10 uh, most desirable compounds to synthesize, and then the top 10 most desirable compounds to buy or to source in some way. That were known, uh, that, that were uh, uh, available perhaps commercially, um, and uh, we we generated a what, what we thought was an interesting look of comp uh, interesting set of compounds to to get. Um, so the top ten commercially available compounds uh, were were shown there, uh, listed as CA to CJ, and um, uh, and we also had a, a, a suggested list of top ten compounds to make, which we. Um, found were not commercially available. Um, now, since then, we've run these compounds and a bunch of others through a, a past uh, the original team at Truscantos, GSK Truscantos, uh, to check that these compounds were known to be active or inactive uh, for the treatment of malaria. And uh, GSK very kindly have gotten back to us to say that uh, none of the compounds that we've put up there are, are known to have been evaluated as antimalarial, as far as they're concerned, which is extremely useful to know. So what that means is that the list of uh, the top 10 uh, most attractive commercial compounds, um, CA to CJ, I think um, pretty much can stay as is, in the sense that all of those compounds are of, um, of interest, and we should be able to get our hands on them. Um, now, as they stand, there's uh, how many of these? Eight, I think, so CA to CH. Eight of these compounds 
we uh, can apparently source from Enaming, and two others we can source from other companies. So unless anyone has a comment or suggestion about those commercial compounds, um, whether some are less suitable than others or some have issues, uh, we can uh, go ahead and try and source those compounds for evaluation. Um, I don't see any problem with that set, but if anyone has any suggestions of what to do to change that set, then, um, then now then now will be the time to bring it up. I think, Matt, I was perhaps just interested in what the strategy would be for trying to adopt those compounds. Uh, when I look, there only seems to be one supplier in the Ukraine uh, for those compounds, so a lot of them, so they could be challenging to get hold of. So, what, what, what's Yeah, this was, uh, we were going to contact Enamine directly. I can't, I can't remember, Paul, if we have already run that through Enamine or whether we um, haven't yet sent it to them. I sent those to Enamine, and um, yeah, they, they basically came back, on, well, not to Enamine, actually, to Molport, and they've been in touch on saying uh, that they have those compounds and they're all good to go. I've actually got quotes for those um, somewhere nearby. For the, for the eight uh, listed as Enamine or for the whole ten? Yeah, so Molport is actually does come through Edimine, which is the Ukraine supplier. But supposedly they have some in stock, and they've been very. Um, Jimmy's dealt with Edimine as well, just getting in touch with them, and they've been um, very quick to respond at least. Uh, supposedly with compounds in stock for all but two, so it's fine. So uh, and the the implication was that um, the compounds are are listed as available, uh, yeah. but also that they actually happen. Yeah. That's right. That was the implication, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. That they have them in stock and ready to go. Um, the okay. two that were missing were the ones that were supposedly out of stock, but they can inquire. So I can't remember exactly which of those two they were now. Uh, I need to dig, dig out the, the, the two different quotes, but yeah, they're available ish. So, the, um, so we have quotes for them, um, and, and Molport were offered to help with, um, with shipping if we order. Yeah. That's right. Isn't it? Yeah. So at the outset, I would like to see if uh, we can source these compounds um, uh, free, uh, purely to um, to see if that's possible. To see if companies that have these compounds already in stock uh, would what would wish to donate some of these compounds to the project like this. I mean, for the sake of speeding on the project, for the sake of good publicity. Um, if that proves not to be possible, then we'll have to uh, you know, get and then act on quotes for um, getting uh, samples the usual way. That was the, the, the plan of attack. Uh, if we can decide on these 10 compounds, and that brings a sense of concreteness to it. So it would be good to get that resolved. Yeah. So the quote I actually have for the um of these compounds plus some others is 1,300 for the lot, so uh, with two out of stock. So yeah, this but this point lot. actually includes some of the compounds that we've now rejected, um, aka some of the thiazolidinone compounds. So we'd so, have to go back to them with a, with a final list. But it would be yes, about a thousand, exactly. but about approximately yeah. a thousand, including shipping. Yeah, and that's sorry, was that through Molport? Through Molport. So this is a, a composite quote from Enamine and Vitus M Labs and Cambridge. Yeah. Okay, so we need to go back and update that. Indeed. Okay. Uh, okay, so that that will be our, our plan is to is to go back to some of these guys and, and inquire about uh, possibilities of donations and 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 quotes for for the ten compounds that are listed. I mean, basically, it's quite simple because I mean, all these compounds look interesting. <clears throat> They're all apparently available, and they none of them have been evaluated before. So I mean, it seems like a good set to go for. Okay, um, so that's uh, with that in mind, we can take those ten compounds, and, and we don't need to worry about the the backup from the rejects that were listed. Um, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no stock to put a limit on it. I'd, I'd suggest, Matt, that we perhaps try for free. Uh, if we're struggling with that, come back to us, and because we have some arrangements with companies where we may be able to leverage a deal. Uh, so. But just loop back in with us if we if we get to the point where we've actually got to pay. Uh. Sure. Okay. That's that's very useful. Um, 
the uh, yeah, I mean, what, what we'll do is is we'll I mean, any quotes um, that we get for any of this from any supplier, we're going to be treating as confidential offline because we don't want to share the exact amount. Um, and and if we get those amounts, then we'll come back to you um, offline, Paul. That's that's great. Um, okay. Um, so that leaves then the main uh, item of business, which is the, the set of compounds that we should be making. Um, and uh, the, uh, so <clears throat> the, there, there are seven listed on, on the website. Again, this is the, the synaptic leap page, which is listed on the discussion notes there. Um, if you scroll down the page, you get to the set of uh, seven compounds with three uh, question marks. Um, so these are uh, SA to SG. And then the three question marks for the new H, new I, new J. So those are the, the compounds that are of most interest now. Um, and those compounds that are shown, the seven that are shown, uh, are the ones that are of principal interest at the moment uh, and were when we posted this page a little while back. Um, now, since then, um, uh, Paul has been um, in the lab working on these and um, has been rather efficient in doing so and has made um, already uh, SA, so the top left compound is now done, um, and has recently made SC, so the third compound with the pyrazole has been made. Except um, the only difference between that SC is that it's the um, four proteo rather than the four fluoro, simply because I have the right hydrazine hanging around. The death fluoro compound, right, so the phenyl rather than the four fluoro phenyl, yes, has been made. Um, and has nearly made um, uh, SB. You want to uh, just be uh, just say specifically how close, Paul? Um, okay, so uh, let me just check that you were talking about the right one. Cause I was gonna... Yeah, SB. Okay, um, so I'm at the ester instead of the amide currently. Um, I've done that. I mean, I just made 30 mix of that so far, which I've now scaled up, and I'm sort of halfway through. So I'm going via um, the sort of intermediate serine linked amide, which I'm then cyclizing for the oxazoline and then oxidizing to the oxazole. Um, so yeah, basically I'm a hydrolysis um, and then conversion to the acid chloride and then split that into three and uh, quench with ammonia, dimethylamine and methylamine to go for the primary, secondary and tertiary amides. But, so yeah, you yeah. feel that SB will, will pretty soon be done? Yeah. As it stands, it's not. So, I mean, I suggest we just keep that there for the moment because it's not yet done. So that's the one that you're currently working on. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that should be uh, well imminently done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, as things stand, the uh, the SD compound, so the fourth one there with the ethyl linker, um, is proving to be tricky, but it's still something that we need. Yeah. Uh, that's the one that, so the, if you just take the, the alcohol at that position rather than the ether, the alcohol is um, relatively unstable really. Um, and uh, so far, the way I've just, I've just the couple of times I've tried making SD just haven't, simply haven't worked. Um, but there's, there's definitely hope for that. Um, right. It just, uh, I, I'm not entirely convinced it will be completely stable at the end. It might just be unstable like the free alcohol. No, sure. It's just we have to keep it on the list because we want it and we don't have it. Yeah. And uh, S, it should be it's listed as S, e, uh, SD, but it should be SE. The sulfonamide um, is also something that we still certainly want to try. Um, there were some issues with, I think some people were expressing uh, doubts about it, but but I, I think it's still an interesting one to go for unless anyone has any objection. Uh, Chris, you want to um, you want to say something? Chris, your audio is not on. Uh, yeah, I was just asking Paul if he'd done the if he'd done searches with these after he drew them. Yeah, so well, all of these have been uh, searched beforehand. So we drew these and then had a look okay. around. It. That's how kind of we found the the commercial Fine. list. They were sort of mimicking as close as we could with these. Um, so and they're very similar. You know, you can find. Um, the, if you look at the commercial analogs, the ones that we're planning on buying, they, they have other you know, analogs of themselves as well. Sure. But these were the okay. kind of closest to the ones that we were looking at. Yeah. Um, 
All right. Um, so the other, uh, and just just uh, the other two compounds that are listed there. So SF, which is the oxidiazole, and SG there, which is the uh, the combination of the pyrazole and oxazole. We still um, need both. Um, I guess the uh, Paul, do you want do you want to say anything about about the um, the bromo compound at this point, or or right. are we yeah. thinking? Well, I mean, you wanted, I yeah. can, I can. So, well, I was kind of curious actually what people thought about S D. Oh, well, sorry, S E, the um, the sulfonamide one, because, I mean, just to probe how easy it is to make that, I started making the um, brominated pyrrole anyway, um, with a view to make the sulfonamide from that anyway. Um, but also that bromo pyrrole is actually quite useful, obviously, for cross coupling chemistry and other things like that. So um, we have. Potentially quite a good way of just, it's very simple to make, it's just MBS bromination and it seems to go in pretty selectively. So we can do cross couplings to make things such as, let's say, SF or SG if we can get the right coupling partners. But I don't think the um, oxazole and the oxidizole coupling partners are that readily accessible. But um, in, in that front, um, SG itself is actually quite easy to make. Uh, by the same kind of way as SC, um, as I already have the, S, the the acid of that compound. So I don't think SG itself will provide any hassle. However, variations at that point might take might be somewhere where um, other groups might be helpful in looking. So let's say um, for cross-coupling strategies or uh, other things. Um, that is, I can make SG itself quite easily, but once we want to move away from that, it might become more of a difficulty. Okay. All right. Um, the oxidizole yeah. as well. Uh, that's a, that's a heterocycle here. I haven't yet looked at making. Um, so that would be another area where, if we can find other people to look at, then that would be a great split for the project. I can do that, of course. <laughs> but it would be nice to get other people involved as well. Sounds like your audio is, uh, is, is working now. Uh, yes, I worked. Yeah, okay, now I went for technical support. I think I've supported it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's, it sounds fine. Um, so I, I guess the conclusion from um, from this is that um, as things um, again, I'm looking at um, at, at node four one two, the the on the face of the desired compounds concentration phase two. So the um, the compounds which uh, essentially stay on that list because they're still needed um, are SB, um, D, E, F, G. So the two that come off because we've got them are S, A, and S, C. That's the that's the upshot of what's happening in the last few years. Um, that leaves uh, five blanks. So new H, new I, new J still have to be defined. And now we need the replacements for SA and uh, SC. That's the basic idea. So there are five gaps. Um, and so we have freedom to put things in there. And, and I guess the, the key thing is uh, what people um, would like to put in those, in those places. Now, uh, we, we uh, so Paul and I were just messing around with some possibilities earlier. And um, there are some obvious things, which some people have mentioned already, which we should probably start thinking about squatting into those places. Um, and I don't know, at this point, um, uh, Paul, should we, do you want to do a screen share of that, of that chem draw so we can have a look at some of those structures? The, the audio should still be working um, when we do this. Um, and I should still be able to deal with the audio, but it would be good to have some of those structures. Sure. Is that all right? So, uh, I'll put the sharing things. Okay, you should be able to see this. So that's the original set, top 10 synthetic. Yep. That's fine. Uh, okay, so these are the, yeah, top 10 synthetic, synthetic now. So we want replacements for these basically. Possibles. Oh, you want the possibles as well. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, it's quite yeah. fuzzy at the moment, at the sound at the moment. So. Uh, 
Matt's got quiet, basically. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there is on my end. Okay, um, yeah, so here's... Um, Matt made some of these. Oh, let me just zoom this in. Is that clear for everyone? How does that start, look on the on your image? I can read it. Can you make it slightly bigger? Just yep. zoom slightly bigger? Oh, wrong way. Arrange. Yeah, that's good. Okay. That's good. So, um, that's great. The, so the, there, are, there are five lines, essentially, in this thing, and there, here are six possibilities. Um, the obvious one, which we've talked about before, is the gem dimethyl. And I think I've got that structure right, that we are thinking about putting the methyls, either one or two, of course, in that position to try and um, reduce the rate of uh, hydrolysis of the ester that's seen in the, in the metabolic study. Uh, so that, I, I believe, that when people were talking about the gen dimethyl ester, they were talking about that compound. Um, yeah. Is that, is that right? Yep, I think so. Um, I think Paul Willis might have mentioned it. Uh, no, that's certainly what I meant, yeah, when I said it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think that that would make sense to go for. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to be to make it, but I think it makes sense to try and go for that compound. Um, unless anyone's got uh, any suggestions about you know whether it should be dimethyl or single methyl. I guess dimethyl is, is the way to go if we want to try and make the ester more stable. Is anyone massively opposed to this compound? <laughs> so I would I would vote that that goes in as um, as the new. Um, SA. Yeah, and I. We can give it a label next. But yeah, and I'll just be pragmatic, Matt. I think that the, the gem dimethyl gives us the best chance of sterically blocking it, but if that, you know, the hindrance makes it too tough to work and we can only get a single methyl in that's racemic as a compromise, that's kind of fine. So, uh, let's yes, be a bit yeah, pragmatic yeah. and driven by kind of ease of chemistry a bit as well. Right, right. Yep. And uh, okay. I guess we want, might still want to go for the, we still need to establish the, you know, this amine here, does it need to be primary or secondary or tertiary or whatever. Um, we know that, uh, so TCMBC794, one of the, or OSM6, as we're calling it now, one with the um, uh, antipyrene here, and that's obviously a uh, secondary amide. Um, but the, some of the metabolism results seem to show that that actually hydrolyzes at this position quicker than, you know, this it becomes inactive. So that's interesting. I know, Paul, Paul Willis, you're, uh, you're keen on having n not the primary amide in, in general terms, right? But, um, and, and so that's why we're kind of mixing and matching that, that position a little bit with some of these analogs? Yeah, I think it's a combination of obviously if you start putting the methyls on you will run the risk of metabolism but then you've got the absorption and permeability issue and primary amides because they hydrogen bond yeah. so well in water tend to be challenging for oral bioavailability so just for synthetic yeah. ease making the primary, secondary and tertiary just to benchmark where we are and that we don't miss anything seems sensible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Oops. Um, the nice thing is that we can buy, um, so the original hit was like this one here, so, uh, CMBT123, A12, so that was the original, um, and we can buy analogs, or we can buy this metal one, and we can buy the dimethyl two, the exact analog, and they haven't been tested, so um, I think buying those would be a good one. <laughs> yeah, we definitely yeah. Um, and then we can, then we'll have a good, you know, we can establish what the effect of that group there is quite nicely at least. Yeah, that's good. <coughs> um, okay, so that would be um, the first one. Um, that would, no, it's a good point though, Paul. Uh, but in, in the, for the synthetic one, the gem dimethyl um, would then lead on to a question of whether um, we go for the amino acid set that's listed top left. So yeah. um, that's just an exploration of, 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 the, of that R group. Uh, and whether that's of any interest. Um, I, I put it there because, you know, synthetically it's probably going to be not too bad. Um, so okay. I also got some interest from, from someone about making those. Um, I, 
Well, I've actually in, so inadvertently as an intermediate made um, this compound. So that's the oh well OME actually uh, here. But, um, sorry, uh, I've made this compound as an intermediate to the oxidol. Um, so you know we could test that, or I could maybe do the hydrolysis at that stage or whatever. Um, yeah. So we sort of have that available there. Well, it was this, this possibility was brought up by by someone um, uh, suggesting that they could um, make well they could install that R group on um, on the original PCMB sorry so on, on, on the yeah yeah to make that bond um, I can't say who it is because they haven't agreed to, to to me making it public yet but they sort of expressed an interest in doing that so um, that became a possibility uh, for that reason. But I, I wonder if maybe we should try and just make one based on the, the thing we were just talking about for, and um, and see if that makes any difference to the activity. And if it does, we can explore that a bit more. Yeah. I mean, that sounds sensible, isn't I mean, it? Yes, there is the cat. Yeah. So we try one. Mm -hmm. So which one should we go for? Which amino acid? And uh, and I'm guessing, do we want this myth like methylated? Because we know at least well, three amide is, as in that compound, with this is good. Yeah, that's no good. But we haven't yet. We want to methylate them. Yeah. No. Oh, sorry, that's true, right? We don't know if the N methyl is going to help us. What we should do fairly soon, I've, so I've made, uh, sorry, let's see that. I've made that compound now as well. Um, so, that can be tested fairly shortly. Um, I just need okay. one. Only thing that this needs is a little. Well, I just need a second column, but it's there. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. No, 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 sorry. This one. This one's fine. This one needs a second column. Anyway. I mean, what are okay. the what are uh, the timings for getting that one out, Paul? Because you could almost see that sort of stop go because if the parent that parent compound is inactive. The likelihood of then the derivatives yeah. being active is slight, so you could almost, you'd like to see the result on that one almost. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, I've got basically um, about five compounds, well, it depends if we include some of the intermediates, but that, that compound's ready, as in, it's in a vial now. Good. So <laughs> we should evaluate if the, if the N-methyl amide is active, if it is, we, we could explore one example of, of Variation with the R group. If it isn't, we 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 yeah. jump back. Yeah. If we if we start, yeah if the methylation here still isn't active, we know that the A might bond is just not gonna not gonna play for us. Okay. So I'd like to put the uh, the amino acid set in as as the new XT, um, but it's provisional based on uh, the N methyl A might be in uh, active. Uh, just check which. Um, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so that leaves three more blanks in our in our top ten. Um, so the, of the ones that are left, um, there's there's yeah the pyrrole methyls was was brought up a while ago. To just to see if it doesn't have to be the N-methyl amide there. It's the the idea is to see if the if the methyl groups are necessary on the pyrrole. Um, and uh, yeah, so that would be the the desmethyl version of the lead compound. Um, this, this seems like an obvious one to try out, um, but I don't know if that, if that brings out brings people up in a rash. You know, that they, they, why would you take the methyls off when it's known that the the Compounds with the, the, the dimethyl pyrrole are, are active. Um, anyone have any any opinion? And there's also generally the worry of the pyrrole as well. I don't know. People, lots of people don't like the pyrrole, so I mean, pyrrosols are happier things generally. Um, so you mean we could just try the uh, the uh, pyrrosol lacking methyl? Yeah, I mean, well, that doesn't give us much information, but. Um, well, you know, it's, it's too variable. One go. Um, I mean, I'd like to try this just because you might as well. Uh, 
Um, yeah. I think my only question would be, I think that we've got at the moment. So yeah. that, that would be my only question. Yeah, I think, I mean, that is, that's... It'd just be, it would be an interesting one just for the essay, but it's not going to help us. Uh, I mean, what about the? Um, okay, I guess I guess one one possibility is to is to combine that with some other change in the molecule. I mean, we, yeah. we could make it. We could have a, a candidate which lacks the methyl, but also has variation in another in another area. So what happens if we do this anyway? I mean, we'll go to lower log p's at least if we do this, but that's not. I mean, it's already pretty low. Um, yeah, slightly higher photosynthesis area. I don't know, I mean, maybe the pyrazole would be a good one. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it'd be, I mean, it'd be good to try and try and make sure that if we're going to actually get these 10 compounds that they do, as Paul suggests, they do actually answer a question. Um, yeah. So it just makes me wonder whether we should be whether we can try and incorporate uh, a pyrrole lack in the methyl with a with a fusion to another ring. So on the on the bottom right there, I, there there's a heterocycle isomer instead of the oxidizer, um, which is an isomer of one that we uh, are currently looking at. So the the current compound of SF is, is an oxidizer, and this is an isomer. Um, yep. You know whether we can incorporate uh, that isomer with uh, you know, the pyrrole lack in the methyl, for example. So we combine the two. Yeah, but then, I mean, without the methyls there, I would start worrying about stability of that pyrrole anyway. Um, yeah. Um. I mean, again, something like if if the the, the, a, the a mod that you're testing. Uh, comes back active, uh, you know, that also could then be a trigger for kind of making yeah. a pyrazole, but then changing the side chain to the amide linker again, so. Yeah, that's true. Um. Yeah. Or kind of one of the others. Yeah, what about these? I mean, yeah. The example at the top there, on, on the top right, was something that came from uh, Jonathan Bale on, on the Synaptic Leap website. So uh, to, to basically to do a, you know, an isosteric terminal amide. Um, that was one example of a heterocycle that was specified as part of a general formula. So the idea was to, to make variation in that, but, but not a drastic variation. Um, it's certainly a possible um, that or a triazole. I think the ones that were suggested. Uh, screen share's gone. Therefore, oh, we've lost. Four. Oh, I have to wait until that. We've lost the screen share for a second. So just give them a second to try and weaken it.
Are you seeing my screen? Yes. Is there anyone? You are. I can't see how to get out of that. So you're seeing the, again the, the possibles here? Um, okay, I just need to... Um, so now I can't, I can't see where for uh, getting out of the screen. I'm going to have to do something in the graphics. Is pull back here. So uh, this, um, uh, uh, so the uh, a couple of the other things that were mentioned on the on the site um, on the snappy lead by Jonathan Bear were, were these fuse rings. So um, this thing here, um, and uh, this is more a uh, more sort of serious undertaking, I think. Um, and I don't know, I don't know, it, 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 you know, substantial amount of synthetic effort. That's the thing that worries me a little bit about it. So um, I'm not sure, um, I guess it depends a little bit on whether it's synthetically accessible. But a compound like that, uh, it's, uh, um, Hello, I'm back. I mean, again. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, Paul. I mean, I mean, look at it it, 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 it looks interesting, but it is highly speculative, and it's a lot of changes, so uh, I'd do some work on the synthesis yeah. and see, you know, if it's something that's going to drop out in three or four steps, then it looks worth doing, but if it's going to turn into an absolute battle for something that's very speculative, probably kind of the risk-benefit yeah. is just not there. Right. Okay, so uh, I'll, I mean, we can put that as a speculative ninth compound, um, and, and we can see if the chemistry is easy, and we can see if anyone has a way of making it straightforwardly um, at, at this stage. But if, if it's not, then we'll, we'll park it and put it put something else yeah. in its place. Um, so that uh, uh, compound eight at the moment, I've, I've got some death metal compounds, I've got some compound like metal, but we, uh, we haven't really defined what it is yet. And then the, the final uh, gap. Would be something like one of these uh, terminal AMI compounds. So, uh, Paul, do you want to oh, yeah. uh, go back to screen share, and I can I can do that. Um, okay, so you should be able to share. Okay. Right. Um, uh, so the yeah. So carry on. Yeah. Um, oh. Fuse rings is is a, is a is a potential knife if it's easy to make. Um, a, a a possible compound lacking methyls is is um is maybe in, in place eight, um, and that leaves us with number ten, um, which uh, could be something to do with this terminal amide replaced with a with a heterocycle. But it depends on what people think about it. Again, it's a little bit of synthetic effort to do that, but but at least the change is only on on the terminal part of the molecule. So it's quite it's quite a convergent thing to try and do. Is we can make something and then and then link that to you know the acid chloride or the or, or, or the acid. Um, so it, it's not outrageous to do that. Um, the question is, what would be the best thing to put up on the top there? Is the the isosteric terminal Yeah. Um, I mean, it, this thing might be generally quite a good thing to look at because yeah, I mean we are seeing we're seeing hydrolysis and well you know metabolism going on at this end anyway apparently. 
So, um, so yeah, something to block that would be also good. I don't know. Um, the emitted all to me seems reasonable, but I, I don't know if I, that's a, a red flag in terms of metabolism. I mean, the, the flag for the imidazole will be CYP3A4 inhibition, which it will have. But I think it, you can make a case that really we just, we're not trying to make the drug here. We're, we're trying to investigate the concept of whether that works. So that's something that we then just fix in the next round of optimization. So, you know, it right. will inhibit CYP3A4 because right. it's an imidazole. But the, there's plenty of, of well known strategies for dealing with that down the line. Okay, so basically we should be basing it on synthetic accessibility. Uh, yeah, and just trying because yeah. yeah. Okay, that sounds good. So, I mean, overall, if, if so, if that's number ten um, or or um, SJ, then that's good. That that would give us all ten that we can make. I mean, and I guess the, the focus very much has been on on varying essentially every part of this molecule except the aromatic ring bottom left and, and I think everyone I mean I'm happy with that I think everyone's happy with that idea that we keep that as it is yeah to me that's something that would fix later or re-optimize later once we've got bioavailability but it's it's unlikely changes down there are actually going to fix that problem yeah okay um, and is there something about this molecule that we um, haven't uh, changed that we should be hmm. we're covering a lot of bases here already particularly taken with the 10 commercial content I mean, the, 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 only, the only things I've wondered about that we don't have on the list, if you kind of look at the, the rejects where, I mean, those exquisitely potent compounds yeah. where they were the kind of, uh, uh, you know, they've got the double bond and, you know, they're, they're pretty ugly, but they are very potent. So I just wonder whether it's worth, you know, if you took the double bond out and just went to, for, to kind of CH2 linker out to another heterocycle, and, you know, I was thinking something yeah. like, you know, uh, you know, a, a, a pyridinone or something, just that would kind of perhaps mimic putting a carbonyl in a similar position, uh, but 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 perhaps a little lower log D and looking a bit more drug-like that might just explore something slightly different from the set we've got at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, yeah, that's that's interesting. CH2 linked to something like a period known, that's, that's reasonable, yeah. Okay. So this is the thing, basically. Yeah. With the heterocycle being the key, yeah. Um, yeah. And that, that's, yeah, that, would that would be, that might be interesting anyway. Um, yeah. And we sub that in as, um, as SI, so the ninth compound for the moment, in place of the uh, the fused for the moment. We can put the fused on a desirables list, but um, we, can, we can sub it in as something that's more mm. likely to yield something. So what was like. this one? But again, I guess we could... Mm. So this was the sub in instead yeah. of the fused rings. So but just at the moment, unless the fused ring is something that will yeah. drop out of the synthesis quickly that I mean we could be flexible at this stage and have it doesn't matter I don't think if we have 11 or 12 and we could just say you know you know we're interested in people who've got if people have got good roots or, or suggestions you know to pick them up and yeah yeah okay yeah okay it's the top 10 most wanted but they're so wanted that the 12 of them you know, <laughs> Uh, okay. No, I mean I'm very happy with the set. I think uh, I, I think it's it's a bunch of synthetic words, but it'll it'll address everything. Yeah, I mean we've had if after this round <laughs> we haven't found anything that's efficacious anyway. I think uh, yeah we've had a quite a decent look at this sort of um, pyrrole slash pyrazole call with the uh, this kind of side chain. 
And then, yeah, I think after this one, I'd be perfectly happy to move on to something else, I think, if, it, if we don't find anything from the next lot. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, well that's great. Look, the, the order of events here would be that we, we're going to draw up this list formally and, uh, and post it. Um, post a, a, another summary of the commercial list. Um, and then uh, we will start, um, well, well, we'll specify which compounds we're making here. And then we're going to go after uh, others uh, to make Does any, anyone who wants to, um, uh, to make the other compounds. Uh, the first thing we'll do is, is talk with Sanjay maybe offline. To, to say, uh, may, may, is there any compounds that you might be interested in? Uh, and then we'll we'll um, we'll uh, put the rest out essentially to tender, uh, not 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 for payment, but to see if anyone's interested in making them. Uh, then if they match with compounds that people already can make, um, that would be the, the way we'll do that. So we'll hopefully post this these lists uh, tomorrow, um, and and take it from there. Does, um, what do people think about? Sorry, go ahead, Paul. Oh, I was just going to say, I mean, Sanjay's in the in this room still, isn't he? Um, I, he doesn't have audio, so I'm not sure at the moment, and I can only see my screen. <laughs> but um, does, is there anything that you, uh, you know, you would like to go for straight away out of these? I can't see the chat now. Well, I can, but... So, uh, I wonder if you heard that. I was just going to ask what people thought about trying to put a rough timeline on, on getting these out because obviously we'd like as many of the set as possible and we'd like them all out and tested to make a decision so you know it'd be unfortunate if it took us you know six months yeah. to get them all out so I think it'd be nice if we could yeah. kind of create kind of a sense of purpose and sort of say you know ideally we'd like to get them out in I'd be interested you know what people think two months three months you know to, to kind of give it a sense that we are going to, yeah, you know, we want these out, make a decision, and then stop go for the series. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're quite right. Um, it, it's interesting because Paul, Paul's made a very rapid progress um, on these in the lab. Um, uh, but, but some of the ones we're proposing are, I guess, significant variations in what we've currently been looking at. Uh, so it's difficult to, to know, but I mean, I, we wouldn't really want to be still thinking about these compounds in two months' time, right? It would be nice if we could somehow manage to, to get all of them in the bag in, in about six weeks or so. It just depends on how the chemistry goes. But I'm thinking of that kind of timeline. No, I think that would be great, just to kind of create a sense of kind of dynamism and purpose that, that, that we're going to... Uh yeah, we're going to try and make a decision in that sort of time scale and then either really go for the series or, or pick a new lead and, and start activities there. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so something like six to eight weeks um, would would be about it and then and then we'll we'll see how we see how we stand. Uh, yes. Uh, and again, I think it's probably worth giving it a week or two to see if people are interested, but if you're struggling uh, that the, some of them I may be able to, to use some of the uh, chemistry resource that we have at MMV to actually uh, right. support the project for a period of time if, if that helps. So uh, my, my let's see what the initial interest is like. Yeah. yeah, certainly that might be quite good, especially, I mean, ideally if we can find someone who, you know, I mean, if we want to look at these sort of linked heterocycle type things at all, um, which we've, yeah, got some of them proposed, you know, if there is some CRO or someone or you know anyone in the lab who fancies doing lots of cross couplings or something like that, then that might be quite good. <laughs> and they have you know ready partners ready for that as well. Uh, look, as soon as we get the um, the, the final list yeah. up, then um, that's going to be our job is to go after um, everybody. So we'll 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 put a new um, effort on trying to get people interested in making these compounds. Um, 
I think as soon as we specify in Sydney what we're doing in Sydney specifically, then then it means that the others are fair game, and, um, uh, and that'll that'll make it clear yeah. to people what they can do. Okay, great. Well, I mean that's that's everything as far as I'm concerned. That's great. We've got a list of ten. Uh, like I said, we'll clarify them and, and post them up tomorrow, uh, just to make sure that everyone uh, that we accurately reflect what we're doing today. But um. Unless anyone has anything else uh, to say, we can, we can call things to a close. No, that's great. I think it's been really successful. I found it really useful just getting everyone together to chat. So uh, it's certainly something I'll be interested in doing again and getting feedback. So thanks for arranging it, Matt. I think it worked really well. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, no, it's really good. Yeah. By all, um, I enjoyed it. Um, I don't. Th I think my med chem's a bit rusty. Um, my only comment is I'm not. Uh, I wouldn't be very keen on the um, uh, the um, uh, acetamide side chain. It would seem to me to be fairly labile. Yeah, I mean. Uh, yeah, if, if there's anyone, um, obviously, uh, Peter, if you happen to be sitting next to um, a, a uh, synthetic chemist in the panton who looks like they've got some spare time on their hands, then you might want to okay. some of these structures to them and say, how about it? <laughs> Not that I'm saying you spend all your time <laughs> in the panton arms, but... Um. All right. Um, Thank you all for showing up. And um, yes, if we if we need another uh, summit like this um, again, then we can easily uh, do that. Seems very very easy. But uh, thanks for your support, everyone who showed up. And, uh, okay, uh, great. Thanks. thanks. Goodbye then. Bye. All right. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.